So you could say since the last episode, I've been a little bit busy. Yes, the majority of my time since the last episode has been spent underground. I've probably spent a good six, maybe seven hours underground. Am I mad? But it has done us good indeed. As you can see from my precious chest, iron supplies are up, gold supplies are up, emerald supplies are up, lapis supplies are up, and more importantly, diamond supplies are up. And we have got 28 diamond blocks now, as well as five diamonds on their own. But that's not everything. As well as gathering those little gems, we have also been down gathering experience levels in our new mob farm, and we managed to get a silk touch pickaxe back. And that led to this. Yep, I have got an absolute downstairs area full of ores, which I need to go through. As you can see, we are packed all the way here, all the way through, all the way to the back wall there. So. We're gonna kick off this episode with a short time lapse where I'm gonna tear down all of these ores using my Fortune 3 pickaxe. And Fortune 3 is a brand new enchant on my pickaxe thanks to my mob farm. Anyway, enough about that. Let's get these ores down and then I can show you even more that's been going on in between episodes. I think it's fair to say that wasn't a bad little haul indeed. Plenty of coal, plenty of redstone, and 42 more diamonds to go with our collection. Let's just throw them into here and make some more diamond blocks. That's another five diamond blocks. Our riches are going up and up every single episode despite a bit of a slump. That wasn't even all of the coal I'd mined as well. I mean, take a look at this. We've got all of these coal ores still here. It's absolutely crazy the amount I have got. But uh, like I said, I have been so busy. I've spent so much time down in the mines trying just to get my resources up and in a bit of a better position because I think so far throughout this entire series we have really been struggling to keep hold of a decent supply of iron. So for any of you eagle-eyed viewers out there you may have noticed that as the ores were disappearing there was something new that I was uncovering behind them. Something else that I have been busy working on in between episodes. As you can see, I now have a staircase here at the end of my downstairs base, which leads down to here, which leads to a nice little corridor. And of course, our corridor now takes us straight to the mob farm. So our mob farm is now officially an extension of our base. Expanding the base even more? Yeah, it's a win-win from me. So down here, we have made some further changes as well. As you'll notice, all my chess monsters that were starting to appear have now disappeared, and we don't have any resources left lying around in chests. We've completely cleared up from our progress in the last episode where we made our nice little areas here. Also, I'm pretty sure diorite shouldn't be there. So now that we have access to this area from our base, I've blocked off the wall to create a solid structure. But you'll also notice we have a lot more chests in here. That's because I have hooked up both farms to the same storage system. So when I said before about we got lots of iron in the chests, that's only half the story. And the reason we have spent so much time down in our mines is because we've got hoppers running all the way under here. Then the hoppers go all the way over to here, all the way down to here, all the way down to this point. They come from this farm all the way down to here. They run all the way into here. And then all the way behind here, we have kind of an automatic storage system and sorting system for a few of the items. So let me just jump into the camera account once again, and I'll give you a little show of what I've actually done behind the scenes. Okay, so here we are with the camera account. I'm just gonna show you behind the scenes here. As you can see, all my hoppers are hooked up and they actually come down here into this dropper elevator here. And I've got a comparator down at the bottom which detects when there's an item in the droppers. And when there's an item, it will continue to pulse and push them up. And then they travel along here, this line here. This first line takes our core items from the farms, which is our rotten flesh, arrows, and bones. In the next one, I've just put some random items in. So we've got a carrot and some iron and some gold. I don't ever expect these to fill up, but I just wanted to get something in place here. So 
the items will run across here. If they're not caught by the filters there, they will continue to run here. And then we've just got 12 chests here, which will gather everything else that comes from the farm. So, so yeah, we've been pretty busy with the farm here. And I kind of, cause I kind of like seeing this underneath. Here is what my sort of world looks like around and about my area. As you can see, we have been very busy. And this is the area over here that I really want to show you. And just off from my slime farm over here, this is what we have been busy doing. This kind of sums up the amount of strip mining we have been doing. And there is still a lot more to go along here. But we have just been working away. This is just expanding on our original strip mine and just branching off branching off into more directions and yeah like i said we've been spending a lot of time here and i think it's probably apparent as to why that is the case right now so like i said i have been really busy in between episodes but now it's not time to dwell in the past it's time to look forward and what we are going to be doing in this episode and today I want to get ourselves all set up for our next episode 10, where we are going to head on into the end, fight the Ender Dragon, and have a bit of an end exploration. So that means we're going to head over to our stronghold and try and find our end portal. So we've done the legwork previously, and we already know the coordinates where our stronghold is located. All that's left to do now is dig down, find the stronghold, and then find where the portal room is itself. Now the stronghold itself is quite a way away from our base and I don't particularly fancy riding our horse all the way out there again. Luckily for me, I took down the coordinates of a beach nearby where our stronghold was located. Therefore, what I plan to do is grab some obsidian, head into the nether, find where the coordinates would be in the nether, strike up the portal, and hopefully we'll end up on the beach. And if not, then I guess we'll be trekking through the jungle until we find the right place to be. So I guess there's no need to waste any more time here. Let's go and grab ourselves some obsidian and head off into the nether. Okay, we are in the nether and we are ready to find this portal. Now I have written down the coordinates here. In the nether, I think we should be looking for a 131 by negative 141 and to help us of course we can use our data pack that we added in the previous episode let's head this way for now and uh, we shouldn't be too long actually before we run into our required position all right guys i have dug in the nether to where i thought we need to be which is 131 by negative 141 and i've used my nether coordinates trigger command here to find and verify my coordinates in the overworld as you can see we got them 1048 by negative 1128 so i'm just going to dig out a bit more here and place my portal and then we should actually pop up where our stronghold is i didn't realize i'd already written down my stronghold coordinates so that's even better than being on the beach. So I'm going to dig this out, place our nether portal, and then we'll see where we are going to end up. Okay, obsidian placed. All that remains now is for us to light the portal and time to go through. So fingers crossed, we're going to end up in the right position here. So we are in a cave. We are in a cave. And our stronghold it's going to be somewhere around here, I guess. Aha! There is our stronghold right down there. Not too far from our portal, actually. So I'm going to try and find a safe way down or make a safe way down here. And then uh, we will continue on our exploration of this area. Can't find ourselves our portal room. All right, we are officially in the stronghold now. There is our ice bite achievement. Now this is where things get interesting. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. I'm actually going to take out this spawner because I don't want this spawner. 
I was not expecting to find the portal room just like that. That is crazy. Well, let's light this up. And then the next thing, I suppose, I'm going to find an area for that uh, nether portal and bring it down somewhere down here so that we don't actually have to go all the way to the top. But yeah, man, that's crazy. I wasn't really, honestly, wasn't expecting to find this straight away. Clearly, my initial coordinates were really, really good to where my ender pearl was uh, ending up and where my ender pearl was being thrown from. But all right, I'm going to go and grab the portal. And we'll bring it back down here and then we can adjust the portal in the nether if we need to. And yeah, we can go and explore this stronghold. But kind of puts paid to my plans for this episode a little bit because honestly, I was not expecting to find the portal room quite so easily. Okay, so my nether portal is repositioned. I've just done a quick coordinate check for the nether and it just seems like we have to move our portal two units in the x coordinate so i mean we we don't necessarily need to move it but i just like to have things nice and neat and tidy so i think i will do it regardless nonetheless so let's break our portal here and we actually just want to move it to we're going to bring it to this direction so we want to move it to in that direction I think. So let me double check. Yeah. Two in that direction. So I'm going to break the portal. I'm going to reposition this one. And then I guess we've got to think about what we're going to do for the rest of this episode. Okay. So all our nether portals are rearranged and sorted. So I don't know, let's, let's just go and explore, I guess, and see what this stronghold has to offer. I don't really see a lot else to be doing at the moment. So Let's see where we kind of end up and where we go to. Okay, we found a library room. Man, this is uh, this is destroyed. Not a good looking library room. I don't think I've ever seen one that's like flooded and in the middle of a cavern before. I've got Depth Strider book and some other stuff. We'll take all the books. There's water. There's a chest down there. And I think there's only only two chests in these sort of setups. Which is just more books and more paper. Probably one of the most uninteresting libraries I have ever come across. It looks like we might have another library through here. Or is this the same one? I think we've just gone around a circle. This is the same one, isn't it? Well, I'm going to be brutally honest here. I've been walking around for probably about the best part of 10, 15 minutes, and I'm quite disappointed. <laughs> I will be honest. Oh, got a chest here, though. With some redstone and some boots. But, yeah, I have to say, this, this stronghold is pretty disappointing. Coal and bread. I've never seen a stronghold room like this before. This is different. This sort of room here is just, this sums up the whole stronghold. Every time I go through a door, it's just a room with nothing else in it. I 
have you ever seen a worse stronghold than this? So yeah, I've <laughs> exhausted this for about, oh, about 40 minutes. And there is literally nothing of interest in this stronghold whatsoever. Literally, it feels like every single corner and room I go into is just a dead end, which hopefully I've managed to sort of put across in the editing. But yeah, this stronghold is rubbish. There's really nothing here to do, nothing left to kind of find. So still kind of struggling how to like draw this episode out a little bit longer because really I, I didn't expect to find this room, as I've said before, quite so easily in previous experiences where I've entered strongholds using the eyes of Ender in the past. They've been not really pointed to this, this stronghold room here and I've really had to sort of search through the stronghold itself to find the room but wasn't the case here and it kind of scuppled my plans a little bit in this episode so yeah I suppose we gotta think about what else we could potentially do here and I'm not wearing gold so I'm about to get wrecked yeah no they've, they've come down here have a gold bar have a gold bar as long as you give me something good in return gravel I asked for something good not gravel. Uh, I didn't showcase this before, before I went back to the stronghold, but after sorting out the portals, I widened this tunnel and I put in some shroom lights here. So almost starting to come up with a look and feel for how I want these never tunnels to run perhaps. So I'll give it some more thought and in coming episodes, I'm sure we can come down and start to make some better looking tunnels. So I have a question. What do we do now exactly? How about some of this? So yeah, what else do you do when you've got nothing else to do? You build a big villager hostel kind of house. <laughs> kind of in the same sort of style with some cobblestone and wood. And the reason I did this was because I thought it was about time we actually had some more villagers in this place. So by placing more beds down here, you will see we will start to get some baby villagers. You can see that one is running quite uh, wild at the moment made too many beds as well but there we go everybody should be able to pathfind to the beds so that is an additional three six eight uh 17 villages we can potentially be generating in our village and of course to go with those beds we're going to have to also make some new workstations such as uh, looms and things that we haven't already got because I don't think we need to generate anything else that we already have. And just in case you're wondering, yep, I've got a different skin on. This is to do with a Halloween trick or treat event on another server, but don't worry, this won't be stopping for long. And that, ladies and gentlemen, will bring us to the end of this episode of Minecraft. I really don't know what else I can do at the moment to drag this one out with the time that we have left. If I start working on another project, I think it'll just drag on too much. So we have finally made it to the end of episode nine. Next up is episode 10, and we are going to be heading on in to the end to take on the Ender Dragon. And additionally, I will also be heading off into the 
N cities area to try and find an N city with a boat and then hopefully we can get our first elytra which i am really really looking forward to as always thank you very much for watching guys i really appreciate your support if you've got any ideas comments questions or feedback about this series please don't hesitate to get in touch and leave your comments down below but until next time i've been knock you've been awesome bye